I'm going to show you how to avoid uh, three common mistakes when using a type-safe Compose Navigation Library in your uh, KMP project. If uh, not properly handled, these issues can cause a runtime exception, multiple screen instances in the back stack, and the third one is the unexpected behavior, which might ruin your uh, user experience. So, to better understand uh, what those issues are that I have talked about, I have prepared here a simple demo project with uh, two screens. By the way, I'm using a Compose Navigation and the Kotlin X uh, serialization libraries to support uh, type-safe navigation in a Kotlin multi-platform, which is of course a far better approach than uh, having to work with uh, hard-coded string values for your destination routes. So here in this demo project, you can see that we have uh, two simple data objects to represent uh, screens in our app. So in this uh, first example, we are using destinations without any arguments, and uh, after that we're going to work our way through. So let's now open up our navigation graph to see what we have here. So as you can see, we have a simple nav host with the home screen as a star destination. I have exposed here uh, two lambdas from uh, both of those screens to trigger those navigation actions. So from the home screen, when we are navigating to our details screen, we want to call the nav controller and its function, which is called navigate. Here, of course, we are passing our uh, second screen, which is the details screen, right? And when we are navigating back, we just want to call that uh, same nav controller and access one function, which is called a navigate up. I'm going to tell you the reason why I'm using this navigate up function in a moment. First, let's start our application and see how it works. Okay, so when we click this button, we are navigating to our details screen. And here, when we press this uh, back arrow, we are uh, popping off uh, our details screen from the back stack which will result in our home screen showing up, which is now the screen which is on the top of the back stack. So let's go back, and there we go, everything works. So even if I press here the back button on our smartphone, or this back action from the side, as you can see, our application will exit, which is the expected behavior. And also, let me just run this app once again. So even if I go to the details screen, and then I try to accidentally click on this uh, back arrow multiple times uh, at once, like this. As you can see, uh, everything will work fine. So that's the reason why I'm always using this uh, navigate up function when I'm uh, simply navigating back to the previous screen in my uh, back stack. But if you are using that other function, which is called a uh, pop back stack, so let's just call here um, a nav controller uh, dot pop back stack. So if you're using this uh, other function, then you might uh, end up in seeing here a strange behavior. So let's go to the details screen. And now if I accidentally press this uh, back arrow multiple times, as you can see, both the uh, home and the details screen will be removed from the back stack because we have accidentally clicked or triggered this uh, pop back stack function twice, which uh, resulted in uh, removing both of those screens from the back stack. And that's the main reason why I prefer using uh, the navigate up function when I simply want to navigate back to the previous screen. So now uh, let's uh, improve this example furthermore. So let's uh, try to add uh, some kind of a, an argument on our uh, home screen first. So in that case, we just want to add here one um, value, for example, let's say a date of a long type, right? Let's also convert, of course, this uh, data object into a data class. Great. So let's uh, try and launch this application. As you can see, as soon as we do that, uh, then our application will crash. So why is that? Let's open up here the logcat first to see uh, what kind of uh, error we're going to receive. So this error says uh, serializer for a class companion is not found. So what does that mean actually? Well, that means that now that our home screen is uh, no longer a data object, uh, we need to treat it like that. So in this case, as you can see, the star destination is uh, set to be the home, right? But since we have changed the home to be a data class, we also need to add those uh, brackets. Let me just here add a default value here to be, for example, a zero, so that we don't have to pass here anything explicitly. And now that we have added those uh, brackets, everything should work fine, and uh, we shouldn't get that uh, runtime exception anymore, which is also one uh, good tip to know about. Okay, so far so good. Uh, let's continue for a more. Uh, the next uh, thing which I want to show you here is uh, how we can navigate back to our home screen by explicitly passing an argument. So now, instead of calling this uh, navigate up, we want to explicitly navigate to our home screen and uh, pass uh, some kind of an argument. In that case, we should call here a navigate function, and we should pass, of course, uh, our home screen. 
And now, of course, that our home screen is a data class, we need to treat it like that. Of course, uh, for this issue, we don't see any warning uh, in our Android Studio. Instead, we will know about this error when we receive a runtime exception. But nevertheless, when we are navigating back to our home screen, uh, I want to pass here a custom argument. For example, let's say uh, 99 or something like that. So it's just an example. And uh, also, what I want to do here, uh, now that we are no longer using that uh, navigate up function, we also want to call a uh, pop up to function. So here, as you can see, we can call here, for example, let's say um, screen dot uh, details, because uh, this uh, pop up to function will make sure to pop off this uh, detail screen from the back stack before we navigate to our home screen, which is of course the expected behavior. And while we are at it, we also want to here call uh, inclusive to true. So this inclusive will make sure that uh, we cannot longer uh, navigate back to our detail screen once we navigate to the home screen. Let's see now if everything is going to work uh, as we expect. So let's navigate to the detail screen. There we go. Let's now navigate back. When we try to go back or press the back button on our smartphone, then as you can see, uh, the application did not exit. So why is that? Well, because uh, when we navigate to our detail screen, our home screen uh, still remains in the back stack. And here with this logic, we have also navigated to the home screen again, which means there are two different instances of the home screen. And that's why we're not able to exit our application when we press the back button. Now to fix this issue, we need to do one more thing. So we need to here call um, a launch single top and set this uh, property to be true. So this, um, property right here will make sure that when we navigate to the home screen, only one instance of that home screen will remain. And now let's try and um, allow this application once again. Let's navigate to this detail screen, click the back arrow. Now let's uh, try and press the back button and our application will exit. So with this, we are making sure that we don't have uh, multiple instances of the home screen in the back stack, which is a great thing. Now, let's improve this example a bit more. Let's uh, make sure to uh, transform this uh, detail screen into a data class as well. So let's uh, create here a data class from our detail screen. And uh, as uh, an argument, we can specify, for example, the ID of a string type with a default value of uh, an empty string, for example. Now let's go back. Uh, also, uh, here you need to make sure that when you are navigating to this detail screen, to add those uh, brackets, because now it is a data class indeed. So when we are navigating to this detail screen, we don't have to pass anything, so it will use that uh, default parameter, which is an empty string. And when we are popping off these uh, details uh, from the back stack, we can also uh, make sure to pass here uh, those brackets. So now this is actually a bad approach, and I'm going to show you why. Let's first launch this application to see uh, what will happen. Let's go to the detail screen. So far, so good. So now let's go back. Let's try and pressing that back button. And uh, everything here uh, seems to work. However, now let's try here adding a parameter explicitly. So the ID value of, uh, for example, 1, 2, 3. So now uh, when we are navigating, we are passing 1, 2, 3. And when we are popping off this uh, detail screen, we are not passing anything. So now let's see what will happen. So go to the details, go back press the back button, and uh, we are back at the detail screen. So why is that? Well, this is what I was talking about. So you shouldn't uh, do uh, something like this. You shouldn't pass the actual instance of this uh, screen class to this uh, pop-up to function. Instead, what you can do, you can just here call, for example, uh, screen.details.class, or even better, you should do something like this. So you should pass the type of that screen right here. So screen dot the details. It's practically the same. So now with this approach, we should be able to fix that issue of uh, multiple detail screen instances in the back stack. Let's go to the detail screen, go back, press the back button, and there you go. So now everything works fine. So even though we are using a type safe navigation, uh, you shouldn't pass uh, that uh, screen uh, class instance explicitly as a parameter of this uh, pop-up to function. Instead, you just need to pass the type of that screen class. And there you go. So those were some of the issues that I have personally encountered uh, while uh, 
working uh, on some of my own projects and uh, I thought that uh, I should share those uh, uh, tips and tricks with you. So, so be sure to comment down below, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to leave a like to this video if you find it helpful, of course, and uh, see you in the next one.